hello and welcome to the data structures so in my previous video i had introduced your concept known as a linked list and what are the types of linked list now today we would be covering what are the various types of linked list operations as well as we will also be understanding what is a circular linked list so let us start by revising what we have learned in our previous video so in our previous video we had learned what is a linked list so i'll revise a linked list in simple terms is a linear collection of data elements similar to an array these data elements are called nodes and linked list as i had stated in my previous video as well is a data structure which in turn can be used to implement other data structures such as stacks and queues and this is how a normal singly linked list looks like we had also covered what are the different types of linked list in my previous video and after that we will be covering what is a circular linked list in this video so let's begin by understanding what is a circular linked list so a circular linked list same as singly linked list here the only difference is that the pointer of the last node points back to the first node in the linked list so this is how a circular linked list looks like as can be seen from the video the last node e points back to the starting node a so this is the basic structure of a circular linked list and now we will be moving on to the various operations which are performed on a linked list so basically three types of operations can be performed on a linked list which is peak operation push operation and pop operation so let's begin with the first operation in the peak operation so peak operation is nothing moving or simply scanning through a linked list to find out what type of data and what data items are stored in a linked list now there are three major steps performed in a peak operation the first is place a special pointer at the start node this is done by simply copying the address pointed by the starter node or the start pointer into the new pointer next start moving according to the addresses and pointers now as we know each node contains two parts means the data part which is the data itself and second is the pointer part which points to the next node in the linked list so you simply need to copy the addresses pointed by the pointers of each node into the special pointer to keep moving through the linked list next stop when next address becomes null now we need to stop when the next pointer or the next address of the linked list becomes null that is we have reached the end of the linked list however this would not be the same in case of a circular linked list so i have covered this case of circular linked list in my example so this is the example as i stated we will use a special pointer which is pointed by the orange arrow in the given linked list so if you copy the address pointed by the start pointer into the special arrow so as that it is pointing to the first node in the linked list now we we'll start moving in the linked list by copying the address pointed by the pointer in a particular node in a linked list so as we can see the pointer of node a points to the node b so this address is copied to the special pointer after which it moves to the node b so here it is we will copy the address of the next pointer of node a into a special pointer thus moving it to node b similarly copy the address of next pointer of node b which points to node c into a special pointer and here it is we have copied the same and moved to the node c and similarly we copy the address of next pointer of node c into a pointer moving it to node d and finally copying the address of next pointer of node d to a special pointer moving it to node e now as can be seen here since in a circular linked list don't have a null pointer so we need to verify whether the next pointer is the address of the first node in the linked list so as can be seen from the video the pointer e points to the first node of the linked list since it is a circular linked list thus we need to stop here as we know that this is the last node in the linked list and this is how peak operation is performed by copying the address of the next pointer of a particular node into a pointer thus moving it across the linked list now we'll move on to the next operation which is push operation so push is nothing but simply insertion of a new node now there are three types of push operations in a linked list that is insertion between two nodes of the linked list or in the middle of a linked list insertion at the beginning of a linked list and insertion at the end of a linked list so we'll cover all these concepts in detail now moving on to the first part that is insertion between two nodes or in the middle of a linked list now there are three steps which are performed when inserting a new node between two nodes first copy the address of the next pointer location of the node after which new node is to be inserted second using this address point to the next node 
third is change pointer of previous node to the new node. Now this might seem a bit confusing as it is written in theory, but we'll take an example to understand better how a new node is inserted between two nodes in a linked list. So let's begin. So we'll be using the same singly linked list to insert a new node, and the new node will be inserted between the nodes B and C. And the new node to be inserted into the linked list is known as. So let's begin. According to the steps, first we'll copy the address of the next pointer of node B into the next pointer of node F, so that it points to the node C. So this is it. We have copied the address of next pointer of node B to node F as well. So as you can see, two nodes are pointing to the same location, that is node B as well as node F. Now you must be thinking why we have copied the address of the location when we could have directly copied the address of node F and the next pointer of node B. Now do remember if we do such a thing, there will be no pointer pointing to the next node after B, that is node C. Thus we would have lost the entire linked list from C, and we would have no data or no method to reveal what is the next node in the linked list. Thus, a better way to do this is to first copy the address of the next pointer of node B into the next pointer of node F, so that two nodes are pointing to node C. Thus, we have a node now pointing to the next node after B. Now, the second step or the last step is now to change the next pointer of node B to point to the new node F. So here it is, we have changed the next pointer of node B which now points to the new node F. And now as can be seen from the video, we have inserted a new node between B and C to the linked list. Thus there are three major steps as I have stated. First copy the address of the next pointer of node B into the next pointer of node F. Then change the address of next pointer of node B to point to the new node F. Now we'll begin with the next part that is insertion at the beginning of a linked list. While inserting at the beginning of a linked list, there are three steps. Copy the address of the start pointer to the pointer of the new node, change the address of start pointer to point to new node, and finally change the end pointer to point to a new node. However, remember the last point is used only in the case of a circular linked list. This does not apply to a singular linked list. Now do remember a very important note. That in the previous case, the function for singly linked list as well as circular linked list will remain the same while inserting a node in the middle or the between two nodes in a linked list. But the same function will change when you are inserting at the beginning or at the end of a linked list, depending whether the linked list is a singly linked list or a circular linked list. So now the same example will be used for inserting a node at the beginning. So now we will insert the node F at the beginning of the linked list that is before node A. So first, as even in the previous example, we need to copy the address of the next node or the address pointed by the start pointer into the next pointer of node A. So here it is, we have copied the address of the start pointer that is the address of the beginning of A into the next pointer of node F. And now we just need to copy the start pointer to point to the new node F. And here it is, we have changed the address so that the start pointer just points to the new node F. And hence we have inserted a new node at the beginning of a singly linked list. Now in the case of a circular linked list, there will be two pointers pointing to a starting node. Hence we will need to change two different pointers in this case. So the first step in this case will also remain the same, that is, we need to make sure to copy the address of the start node or the start pointer to the next pointer of node F, so that it points to the beginning node A. So here it is, we have copied the address of start pointer into the next pointer of node F and it now points to node A. So as can be seen from the video, now three different pointers are pointing to node A, namely the start pointer, the next pointer of node F and the pointer of node E which points back to the beginning of the node A since it is a circular linked list. Now we need to change the start pointer as usual so that it points to the new node F and as you have changed the start pointer to point to the new node F. Now as a last step, we also need to change the pointer of E so that it points to the node F since now it is the beginning of the linked list and an end pointer always points to the beginning of a linked list and circular linked list. So this is how we will change 
the address of next pointer of e which now points to the node f instead of node a since now it is the beginning of a linked list. This is done by simply copying the address of the start pointer into the next pointer of node e so that it points to the new node f which is now inserted at the beginning of a linked list. And so this is how a new node can be inserted at the beginning of a linked list. Now the last step or the last thing we will learn about inserting into a linked list is insertion at the end of a linked list. So let's begin. We will be using the same example of a singly linked list with insertion at the end. The insertion at the end in case of singly linked list is very simple. As in this case, we need to insert a new node f at the beginning of a linked list. So in, you just need to change the next pointer of node e from null to point to the new node f. So this is it. We have changed the address of node e to instead of null. Now it points to the new node f. And that's it. We have inserted at the end of a linked list considering a singly linked list. Since the new node of or the node that is to be inserted into a linked list will always have a next pointer as null if it is not changed at the beginning. Hence the node f already has a null at the end so that it points to the end of a linked list. Thus changing the next pointer of node a so that it points to node f will simply insert a new node into a singly linked list as well as it node f will also terminate the linked list since it contains a null pointer at the end. Now this is a little different in case of a circular linked list. In case of a circular linked list now we have a node e which points back to the starting of the linked list that is node a. So now we need to change two pointers. First we need to change the node e to point to the new node f as in a previous case. So this is the same thing what we have done. We have changed the address of node e to point to the new node f into the linked list. But as I have stated earlier, before pointing node e to the new node f, it is always a great thing to copy the address of the node e or the next pointer of node e which is pointing to the node a in the linked list into the next pointer of node f. So that is what we have done. We have copied the address of next pointer of node e which is pointing to node a in the linked list into the next pointer of node f in the linked list. So that the address could not be lost. This is anyways not needed in this case since there is already a start pointer pointing to the beginning of the linked list. But as we have done in the previous case it is always good to uh, perform the same steps rather than changing the steps according to the condition. So it is a great thing to perform similar steps and hence we have copied the address of next pointer of node e into the next pointer of node f. Now we simply need to change the address of the next pointer of node e so that instead of pointing to the beginning of the linked list a, it will now point to the new node f. And here it is, we have changed the next pointer of node e so that now it points to the new node f. And thus, a new node f has been inserted at the end of a circular linked list. Now moving on to the last operation in the linked list, that is the pop operation. A pop is nothing but simply a deletion of a node from a linked list. There are three types of pop operations as well. Deleting a node from between or in the middle of a linked list, deleting the first node and deleting the last node. So let's begin with the first step that is deleting a node from between the linked list. So we'll be using the same type of linked list which we have used in the previous examples. Now we need to delete a node C which is situated between node B and node D. So we'll do the same thing. We'll copy the address of the next pointer of node C, which points to node B in the linked list, into the next pointer of node B. So here it is. We've copied the address of the next pointer of node C into the next pointer of node B, so that it directly points to node B instead of node C, as in the previous linked list. Now, as can be seen from the video, there are two pointers pointing to node D, node B as well as well as node C. Now you can directly delete the node C from between the linked list. Now if you are using an object oriented program such as Java, it will automatically delete the node since it is no longer required. But if you are using a programming language such as C, then you will need to manually delete the node otherwise it will keep occupying the memory in your system. Next. So this is how the linked list should look after we have deleted node C from the system or from the linked list. Thus, after A, B, B will now directly point 
to the node D in the linked list and D will now point to the E in the linked list. Now I'll move to the next step that is deleting the first node in the linked list. Now as in the case of insertion, when you have to delete a node from between the linked list, the procedure remains the same whether it is a singly linked list or a circular linked list. But the procedure changes when we will use the other two types of deletion methods. So now let's begin for deleting the first node in the linked list. Now in a singly linked list, it is simple that we simply need to copy the address of next pointer of A into the start pointer. So here it is. We have copied the address of the next pointer of A into the start pointer so that it points directly to the node B instead of node A as the starting point of the linked list. Now you can simply delete the node A so that the start pointer directly points to the node B as the starting point of the linked list. And this is how the linked list should look after we have deleted the node A from the linked list. Now coming to the case of a circular linked list. In circular linked list, there are two pointers pointing to the beginning of the linked list. The regular start pointer as well as the end pointer in the linked list. So now we need to change two pointers. So we will start by making modifications to the end of a linked list. Thus we will copy the address of next pointer of node A to the address of next pointer of node E. So that next pointer of node E points to the node B instead of node A in the linked list. So this is how the linked list should look after node E points to the node B in linked list instead of the starting node A. Now moving on to the next part, we will copy the address of start pointer so that it points directly to the node B instead of node A in the linked list. And this is how we have done, we have copied the address of the next pointer of node A into the start pointer of node of the linked list so that it points directly to the node B instead of node A in the linked list. And now we can simply delete the node A from the linked list because after deletion the linked list will look something like this. The node A has been deleted and the start pointer address the next pointer of node E now points directly to node B in the linked list. Now the last part is deleting the last node in the linked list. Now in case of a singly linked list, it will be much simpler to delete the last node. So in case of a singly linked list, simply change the pointer of node D which now points to node E into a null pointer. So this is how we have done. We have changed the address of node D, which now pointed to node E into another pointer, thus deleting the node E from the linked list. Now, after removing the node E from the linked list, the linked list should look something like this. We have deleted the node E, and the node D is now the end of the linked list containing the null pointer. Now, we'll move on to the case of a circular linked list. There will be few changes in case of a circular linked list since the end pointer of a circular linked list points back to the first node in the linked list. So now we need to change the next pointer of node D so that it points back to the first node A. Now this is done by simply copying the location or the next pointer of node E to next pointer of node D. So this is how we have copied the next pointer of node E to the next pointer of node D so that the node D also points to the first node in the linked list that is node A. Now we can simply delete the pointer of node E as well as the entire node E from the linked list since it is no longer required. And this is how the linked list should look after deleting node E from the linked list. Thus now next pointer of node D will point to the first node in the linked list that is now it will point to the node A as well as the start pointer will remain the same as it will be used to point to the starting of the linked list node A. Thus, we have completed all the concepts regarding linked list and we have completed three major operations which are performed on a linked list, namely P, push and pop. Now, there are two important points to be remembered in performing these operations. The first is we need to verify the way we are going to change the pointers and in inserting a new node or deleting a new node. As I stated, while inserting a new node, if you change the pointers in a wrong way, you may end up losing the entire linked list or losing a part of the linked list in which in a way where the linked list can never be recovered. So you should avoid doing this and always be aware of which pointers you are going to change in the linked list. That is what the second point states, if you change the pointers in a wrong way, the entire linked list may be lost. This may be the case that if you change the pointer on the first node in a wrong way, the entire linked list of the first node may be lost and there is no way you are going to recover the linked list.
Thank you. Please do like, share and subscribe if you have enjoyed watching the video. If you have any queries regarding the insertion in the linked list, deletion and linked list on the peak operation, you can simply post in comments on YouTube and I will be happy to answer to your queries. These are a few of the other videos from my channel. If you have liked watching this video, do view these as well.